Hi folks, so today I am going to be talking a little bit about my time with the Pale Moon browser. It's a lesser known browser that I've been using as my primary browser now for the past week and I'd like to let you guys know a little bit about my experiences with it. Now before I crack on with that, I do want to uh, make a little tangent into talking a little bit about the thought process going behind or going on behind me even making this video in the first place. Now usually the browsers that I take a look at are usually the, the bigger ones, Firefoxes, the Chromes and that kind of thing. But uh, there's a great video by uh, fellow YouTuber HexDSL, who are, uh, which I will of course link to down in the description here. It's a good conversation actually, uh, talking about the various ramifications of choosing a browser with various web engines. Now, now there are a significant number of browsers in the browser market, but only a limited number of browser engines. So there's a, a web page here on Wikipedia called Comparison of Browser Engines. And you can see some of the main ones. So we've got WebKit here, which they say the steward is Apple, but there are several other companies that have contributed to this particular web engine. It's embedded in uh, the Safari browser, plus all browsers hosting on, hosted on the iOS App Store. We've got Google's Blink, which is used in Google Chrome and the other Chromium-based browsers, such as now Microsoft Edge, Brave and Opera. We've got Gecko, which is the one behind Mozilla's Firefox. And the, up until this point, Firefox was my primary browser uh, to use. And there are some things about Firefox that I think are particularly wonderful. But uh, not only has Firefox garnered something of a bit of a, a mixed reaction to some of its recent decisions, uh, but also it also doesn't necessarily widen the scope of uh, browser engines available. So even if Mozilla were putting together the best Gecko uh, web rendering engine that you can get, it still is a limited market in terms of we can only, you know, like we don't necessarily want web engines to be the prerogative of big uh, for-profit or non-profit uh, entities. And uh, Mozilla is, well, it kind of does sometimes straddle both camps in the non-profit and for-profit, uh, often re being referred to as a for-profit non-profit jokingly because um, even though Mozilla's uh, usage share is shrinking, uh, these days, it's often touted as making more money than ever before, which is um, a little bit suspect, especially when you consider some of the deals that they've been making. Now, you can say that this isn't necessarily tied in completely with the web engine, but um, the end result is we still don't want web engines to be the prerogative of these big uh, multi-million dollar profits, non-profits, entities, whatever you want to call them. So um, looking at the some of the wider scope here, we've got Servo, which is also a Mozilla project for an experimental browser. I'm not entirely sure what that is, but considering that it's um, still Mozilla, it's still coming from, again, a very much the same source. Uh, an issue that I guess I kind of have with WebKit, because if you actually look at the WebKit uh, Wikipedia page, you can see right here in the developers, Google is right up there. KDE there as well, interestingly enough, but Google, you've got Adobe. Adobe have never been a particularly uh, wonderful company when it comes to digital rights and so forth. Uh, and then there's Apple who, um, well, I'll, I'll let you guys make up your own mind on Apple. They're a big enough company with enough, uh, you know, public materials out there for you guys to make your own decisions. So um, going down, we've got Goana. Now Goana, is uh, stewarded by MC Straver. Um, it is licensed under the Mozilla public license and it is used by the Pale Moon and Basilisk browsers. So this is quite interesting. I've got the page for Goana up here now. And it says that Goana is an open source browser engine that is a fork of Mozilla's Gecko. It is used in the Pale Moon browser, the Basilisk, Basilisk browser, and other UXP based applications. A fork of the K Maleon browser also uses it. Goana is an independent fork of Gecko. Uh, it, no, uh, Goana, as an independent fork of Gecko, was first released in January 2016. The project's founder and lead developer, MC Straver, had both technical and legal motivations to do this in the context of Pale Moon's increasing divergence from Firefox. There are two significant aspects of Goana's divergence. It does not have any of the Rust language components that were added to Gecko during Mozilla's Quantum project, and applications that use Goana always run in single process mode whereas Firefox became a multi-process application. So there are a few points here, uh, but it is, of course, important to bear in mind this is a fork and not a completely independent project. But um, nevertheless, uh, it is now sort of independent of 
uh, gecko it seems because that's what, what a fork is uh, rather than something that is based on another project um, but uh, I've been playing around with the Pale Moon browser and I've got to say I've actually really been enjoying it um, now, I can't necessarily speak entirely to its um, performance credentials because this computer is a rather fast computer and um, I don't think I would really have any problems running any kind of browser in that regard. But it is often included as um, a lightweight browser in many other distributions. Uh, and I was actually quite happy to see that it was available in the native Manjaro repositories, which is pretty cool as well. Also available, I believe, in the native uh, MX Linux repositories. So it does seem to have a degree of um, uh, of popularity among some of the more, I suppose, community-centric distributions. Um, but it is also available as a binary, and you can run it um, uh, from that as well. And also, I believe, is available in terms of... So it gives you, yeah, it gives you some repositories there, gives you a Slack build, um, repackages for Ubuntu, Debian, etc. So it's uh, it's pretty readily available, but it isn't really as... A, uh, it isn't really as... Um, it isn't really... Uh, available in as many native distribution repositories as I'd like, but hopefully um, if it gains momentum, then that would change. Um, so, uh, one of the... Now, what I've got here is a very standard layout here. Now, my actual uh, browser, uh, my actual Pale Moon browser, actually has a significant amount of customizations, but I do have to say, on a superficial, le superficial level, the, um, the browser interface that it's modeled after, which is a more classic Firefox uh, look, I actually really enjoy. I never realized actually how much I missed this. I actually kind of like having the uh, menus at the top here. Being able to navigate bookmarks using this menu is actually pretty cool. Um, I like having just so many options on hand here. Uh, and it doesn't really take up uh, much uh, in the way of screen real estate as uh, at all. Um, but it gives you a lot more options uh, there and then. Uh, now, I can understand why people would might, might want to get rid of it, but if you can uh, look at this menu here, if you right-click on some of the uh, UI elements, you can actually remove uh, and change around quite a lot of... Uh, so if you get rid of the menu bar, it will then put the uh, menu panel, I guess, uh, which is very similar in the uh, left of the, the tabs here. So you've got a lot of options in regards to customization, and you do actually have themes available to you as well. Uh, however, uh, to be honest, I actually kind of like it when the browser fits in with the overall desktop theme. So I've not really been looking at some of these, um, you know, like the dark themes or the uh, Aero Moon, if you want to make it look like Windows, uh, Windows 7, is that? Um, yeah, Windows Vista slash Windows 7. So that's kind of, kind of amusing there. So they've got, it looks like they've got a couple of neat uh, neat looking... Oh, Material Moon uh, to make it look a bit chrome, chromey-esque. So uh, that is... Um, that's not too... Yeah, so it's uh, it's got a few. And also, uh, it does have a significant number of... Oh, those are search pro of plugins. Uh, what am I looking for? Extensions. It does have a decent number of extensions. Another thing I like about it is that it does actually have RSS feed support. So, uh, for example, if I go to my website, because I'm not going to uh, uh, miss out an opportunity to actually promote my NeoCities website, chrisware.neocities.org, there's quite a few things available on it, links to useful applications, also a few Game of Thrones notes that I put there, but also uh, there are RSS feeds to a lot of my social media stuff. A lot of people don't know this, but for example, YouTube still supports RSS, Twitch actually has a third-party RSS um, option there. Uh, Peertube, of course, has RSS, Pixelfed, uh, Mastodon. So, if I wanted to have a look at, shall we say, uh, my uh, my YouTube RSS feed for uh, Chrisware Digital, uh, I can go into it, and it looks just like the old um, Firefox um, way in, in which you uh, were able to uh, uh, to manipulate RSS feeds. Uh, you could actually choose an application. I don't even know what my Yahoo is. I suppose it's an RSS reader that Yahoo do. Um, but uh, you can choose one of your applications, Liferia or um, one of the uh, you know RSS Guard or, or the um, is it Aggregator, which is the, the one that often is bundled with KDE? Oh, you've got the live bookmarks feature as well, which looks a little bit like the most visited uh, uh, websites here. So, I actually really like that. I think that it was an absolute travesty that, that Firefox actually got rid of RSS support. I 
was it really that um, difficult to sort of maintain? I I mean, RSS is, I mean, it's called, was it called Real Simple Syndication? I think it is. I mean, it is simple. It's hardly, uh, it's hardly the riddle of the Sphinx to work out um, what, you know, RSS is all about. But, and it's not, you know, maybe they could have gotten rid of live bookmarks and just actually had uh, better RSS support um, in, in other capacities. But I don't know. I don't know. I mean, to be honest, in a lot of cases, it's frustration at Mozilla and Firefox's decisions uh, that have actually, uh, you know, led me down the route of seeing what other alternatives there are available. And I know for a fact that I'm not the only one that, uh, while you know, overall agreeing with the aims and objectives of Mozilla and Firefox. And I do want to see Firefox do really, really well as a browser. I do have to say some of the decisions they make from time to time, uh, put you know, make me put my head in my hands. They really, really do. So, uh, I, you know, I, I'm here to, to, to see what the underdog has to offer. And overall, i got to say, a lot. The underdog has a lot to offer. Um, so, what else is there? There is also, uh, we also have the option of setting up Pale Moon Sync. Now, I did not use Pale Moon Sync in my um, in, in my trial at all in the past week. So I'm not going to comment on it whatsoever, but it does tout a syncing service, which primarily, although they do uh, reiterate time and time again, it's not designed for backing up or a cloud service or anything like that. It's really more des uh, designed so that you can have a set of maybe like uh, bookmarks on, on one uh, device and then you can actually sync them over to another. So while it's it does use a central server, it's really just a way of you know syncing up um, uh, a few you know tools and, um, and and bookmarks and all that kind of thing. So um, it doesn't seem to be as extensive as Firefox's sync tool, nor does it need to be. Um, or but it does seem to be a um, a, a courtesy service that uh, that it does extend to its users, which I think is absolutely wonderful. So um, when I was looking through the plugins and I uh, and the extensions, and I must say, for the most part, I don't tend to recommend extensive use of plugins um, because they can contribute to things like fingerprinting. They can be a security hazard in their own right. There are a good number of them. There are a good number of them. Um, so uh, if there is some uh, sort of common use case that you feel that Pale Moon is missing, there is a good chance um, that someone would have developed something for it in their... Uh, in their in-house extension library. So that's pretty good. Um, and I actually, to be honest, I, I have found everything I needed, uh, in if not in the browser itself. And the browser itself is, I would say, a little bit more full-featured than Firefox, because Firefox do like to take out uh, useful features from time to time, uh, i.e. RSS support. But on the other hand, um, yeah, there's uh, th there there are some good um, tools and utilities and add-ons here. So there's a calendar. I've not tried most of these, but... Um, but look, yeah, I mean, there's, there's there's a good amount there as well. Um, excellent. So, what else have I got to say? Oh, yes, there was one hiccup that I did have, and that was uh, I did notice some stuttering on YouTube videos after a while. Uh, this was actually easily remedied with a bit of a Google search. Actually, not a Google search, a DuckDuckGo search. DuckDuckGo is the search engine uh, that Pale Moon defaults to, which is pretty good. And you can also search using Yahoo, Bing, Ecosia, Twitter. Okay, so there's not even Google in the roster there. Interestingly enough, with DuckDuckGo, if you do want to search Google, if DuckDuckGo does not provide you with the results that you want, you can just do bang G and then um, search whatever it is that you want to search. And then it gives you all that kind of stuff there. So if you go to uh, config and type uh, acceleration or accelerate, uh, it'll give you layers acceleration force enabled. And this basically completely got rid of any stuttering that I had on YouTube videos. So that was uh, uh, that was pretty good there as well. Okay, so what have I got here? Now, this is a new test that I'm going to be running on all browsers that I'm going to be testing going forward. And it's the browser scores, uh, your browser scores 424 out of 555 points. Now, all this does is list all the various different elements uh, that, uh, m you know, are commonly seen across web across websites. And it'll um, outline some of the uh, support elements. Now, I don't know how many of these elements are contingent on, should we say, repositories that aren't part of the browser. 
uh, but they do differ significantly from browser to browser that I have used. 424 is definitely on the lower end, but no browser that I've tried, not even uh, Chromium, actually has 555 out of 555. So there's uh, no browser that I've seen that actually supports everything on this list. But it is effectively just a checklist to outline uh, all the various different supports. And uh, I was actually quite surprised that things like Twitch worked out of the box, YouTube streaming worked out of the box, and... Um, the only thing that I did notice, and the only thing that did, uh, that would have, shall we say, required me to have a second browser on hand is, um, where does it say here? Uh, it does not support WebRTC 1.0. Uh, now, I did a brief search, not a particularly extensive one to work out why this might have been, but I do know that there are some security hazards with uh, uh, WebRTC, and if you're, you know, a smaller browser with a smaller development community, you might not want to support it at all, uh, rather than support it badly and thus risk your users being uh, compromised or having their um, you know have having their security or privacy compromised as well I know that there is some baggage with uh, web RTC so things like um, meet Jitsi uh, don't uh, work particularly well however uh, and even though there are some video playback services that do require web RTC um, most of the ones that I've tried things like PeerTube and uh, and the likes uh, they have an uh, an HTTP fallback, as I understand it. So uh, it doesn't actually interfere with your use case and usability from that point of view. So, um, yeah, I mean, even though there are... Um uh, it, it ticks a lot of these boxes here. Uh, some of the more advanced multimedia-esque stuff you may ne uh, need to dip into a, uh, a different browser, but uh, I don't necessarily think that there is a massive problem with actually ha using more than one browser. Um, you can use one browser, you know, your preferred browser for the overwhelming majority of your day-to-day -day browsing. And then if you just need to use something that is particularly maybe multimedia centric or uses WebRTC, then you can possibly switch across to another browser. Now, I did actually try uh, Meet Jitsi in Basilisk, which also uses the same Gowana uh, web engine, and it did work. So it's not actually a limitation of the Gowana engine, it seems, but rather um, just a, a, a choice from the uh, Pale Moon development, which is perfectly fine, in my uh, personal opinion. Don't, you know, you, there's no need to support something if you're going to end up supporting it um, badly, especially when it comes to something like WebRTC, which is particularly uh, complicated, as I'm, as I'm led to believe. So did the fact that uh, Pale Moon being a single process application have any real impact on performance or anything like that? Uh, and at the end of the day, largely no. Um, it ran perfectly well. Now, I don't know if this is because my computer is particularly hefty or whether or not uh, it's just because um, of, of how the browser itself manages its resources, um, but it ran really well. It's you know, it's it's um, responsive, it's intuitive, it runs fast, it harkens back to a more classical era of web browsers when Firefox was a lot more popular and had that sort of, you know, great deal of mass appeal and all that kind of stuff. And, um, and I do like the classic look. I actually like having the menu bar at the top. Uh, I do like the sort of the mentality with which with which that it's put together and um yeah overall there was very little that i couldn't do in this browser it was really came down it really came down to the web rtc thing which i'd be more than happy to open something like basilisk or firefox to uh, to do that kind of thing in but uh overall I have to say, not bad. Now, there is one thing that I do want to allude to in this video, but uh, it's an issue that I am by no means an expert in. So uh, forgive me if I make any technical uh, errors in this, uh, in what I'm about to say. And it's uh, alluded to a lot in the Web Browser Dilemma video uh, on Hex's channel. Uh, and that's that one of the things that WebKit has uh, that makes it so appealing to a lot of developers is that it's it seems to have this portability that people can just drop it into uh, other browser, you know, in, into browsers um, quite easily. And an example of this is um, Qt Browser. Now, the Qt Browser is the rather well-known keyboard-driven browser, which a lot of people are singing the praises of these days. But um, it does use WebKit. And as I understand it as well, um, the GNOME web uh, browser also uses things like WebKit. And WebKit seems to get around quite a lot as the uh, browser engine inside a lot of these lesser-known browsers. So, um, I don't know if Goana is as portable, is as um, cust is customizable. The word it has this ability to be able to, you know, be used in something like Cute Browser rather than uh, WebKit. Um, 
so it'd be interesting to see if it does manage to make itself as a you know as a more sort of adaptable engine because as it currently stands now it still does seem to place itself as a an early fork of firefox despite the fact that it's definitely developing uh, itself as an independent engine in its own right but uh, is it going to be as usable from a development standpoint as webkit and i guess only time will tell on that one because it would be absolutely wonderful if uh, that is something that um that goana can bring to the table or maybe another um, web engine as well, because quite frankly, just adding Goan to the list isn't going to, to expand it that much. I want to see as many uh, web engines as there are uh, browsers, and it is a little bit of a, and I know that that's a little bit of a pipe dream, because the more complex the web becomes, the more difficult it's going to be to develop a web engine. And uh, in uh, in the old days, there used to be more reliance on things like uh, you know Flash plugins and all that kind of stuff. And nowadays, we're bringing HTML5 and all these various different components into um, into the browser natively. Uh, it does seem that developing a browser now seems to be the prerogative of rather large organisations and for-profit companies. And uh, that I think is a step backwards. Uh, I always feel that technology is its most accessible when not only everyone's available, you know. Um, a, when not only everyone has the ability to use it, but also more people have the ability to develop it and develop for it as well. So, you know, software usability and software accessibility isn't just about using software, but to me, it's also about uh, allowing its development and empowering its development and encouraging its development. So uh, hopefully with Goana, it'll be able to diversify. <clears throat> hopefully with Goana, it will um, be a positive impact in the marketplace, help diversify it a little bit. And, um, and and it's nice to have a, you know, like a community, uh, a community pit dog in this fight. Uh, it's nice to actually have, um, you know, something that's a little bit more grassroots, a little bit more, um, you know, community centric. And, um, and, uh, and I think that that's, that's broadly speaking, a really good thing. Um, you know, it's nice to see the underdog um, do as well as it is. And I've had a great time using Pale Moon Browser. So, um, yeah, um, I'm going to be moving on to the Basilisk Browser now, which does use the same engine, but does offer up a significant number of differences. And I did actually run, go on, uh, run Basilisk through this HTML5 test, and it did actually score reasonably well um, uh, uh, compared to even some of the, the big name browsers. So it will be interesting to see how I fare with that one. But um, you can, uh, yeah, I do actually recommend giving Pale Moon a shot if it's uh, something that you'd like to take a look at. Um, you know, a slightly more maybe community-centric browser, uh, something that isn't necessarily or doesn't necessarily have huge amounts of money pushing its development that is... Uh, well, maybe the, uh, the the browser engine built by the people for the people, or one can hope. So I definitely have to say, uh, yeah, it's definitely worth a look, even if it might not necessarily end up being your primary browser, or maybe it might end up being your primary browser, and you still might need to, to dip into Firefox or Chrome or whatever for the occasional multimedia heavy use case. Who's to say? So let me know your guys' uh, thoughts down in the comment section below, and I will be cracking on with Basilisk now. Uh, don't forget to check out uh, Hex's um, video there, and also uh, don't forget to check out my Twitch channel, twitch.tv forward slash chrisware. I stream there several times a week these days now, and it's a lot of fun. So we you know we just sort of chat, hang out, play a few games, that kind of thing. So anyway, guys, thank you very much for joining me. Uh, this has been Pale Moon Boot... <clears throat> This has been Pale Moon Browser. I've been Chris Ware, and you've been awesome. Uh, thank you very much, and toodaloo.